Hey traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ, and today I'm going to show you how to calculate the expected move of a stock based on the option chain. Just before we get started, a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is general in nature, and does not take into account your personal circumstances. Okay, so the expected move shows us how much the market makers are expecting a stock to move over a certain period of time. That's all based on the implied volatility of the stock and also the various options. So things that can impact that, if we've got a high volatility stock, obviously the expected move is going to be a lot higher. If we've got earnings coming up, the volatility is going to be higher, which means the expected move is going to be higher. Um, generally, the further out in time we go, the higher the volatility, therefore the, the higher the expected range and also the higher the option prices. So the easiest way to calculate the expected move is using the at the money straddle. So let's look at a couple of examples. So if we take Apple, bring in the stock price, and then we'll bring up the option chain. So we've got the stock trading at about 225, okay? So we go to the expiration that we're interested in trading, just using October 18th here. 225 is the one that's closest to at the money. So we take the midpoint of the calls, we'll just add these in, and the midpoint of the puts. So we've got that here, the midpoint, and what we do is we'll just go into Excel. I'll put the stock price here, and then we're gonna add these two numbers here, the two midpoints. I'll just use the exact midpoint like that. So, Basically, this is saying that between now and October 18th, the market is expecting Apple to move up or down by $9.28. So that could be on the upside up to about $2.35 and on the downside to about $2.16. So we can use this information when we're looking at placing our bull put spreads or our condor strikes, or if you're doing a short strangle, you want to be outside the expected move. Now, we can also put this in percentage terms if we're wanting to. We just take the expected move divided by the stock price. And basically, this is saying the market makers are expecting Apple to stay in about a 4% range over the next two weeks or so. Let's look at a further expiration, so further out in time. Let's go out to December this time. Now we can already see that the option prices are a lot higher. So we're going to be expecting that that expected move is going to be a lot higher as well. So we'll take again our midpoint of each one. Now we're looking at a range of about $21 up or down. So about 247 on the upside and 204 on the downside. So about a 9% swing up or down is what's expected in Apple between now and December 20th. Let's look at a much more volatile stock. So at the moment, uh, Coinbase is very volatile. Uh, we can see over here, Apple, the volatility is about 26% on Apple stock and it's about 73% on coin. So we're gonna see a much larger expected move here. So let's do the same thing, 164. So I'm going to say 165, that's closest to at the money. You can already see these option prices are much, much higher than those same Apple options for that same expiration. We'll add our December ones as well. And let's work out our expected move for Coinbase. All right, so stock price is 164. So we're looking at an expected move of about $20 in Coinbase compared to $9 in Apple and on a percentage basis, a lot higher. So 12.5% move up or down in the next two weeks. That's pretty high. If we go out to the December expiration, you can see how quick this calculation is, particularly if you've got it in a spreadsheet here. Now we're looking at potentially a 30% move up or down on coin stock between now and December. Okay, so much, much higher than Apple, and that's as you would expect for a much more volatile stock. Now, there is another way to calculate the expected move, 
And this is the formula here, stock price times implied volatility divided by 100 times the square root of days to expiration divided by 365. Now, I find this a bit cumbersome. I find it much easier to use this method. can pretty much guarantee if you use this method or this method, you're going to get pretty much the same number anyway. So I would always use the, the more simpler version of using the at the money straddle. And when you're looking at the expected move, you obviously want to tie in um, whatever expiration date you're trading. That's the expected move that you want to calculate. There's no point calculating an expected move for two weeks on Coinbase if you're going to be trading the December options. So just to repeat, main things that are going to affect the expected move, the volatility of the stock, how long there is to expiration, and any events that are coming up, earnings, Fed meetings, things like that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, please reach out anytime. Otherwise, have a great day.